There's a cute little bed and breakfast management RPG called Bear and Breakfast that released in 2022 on PC, Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation. And although it was on my Steam wishlist, along with 522 other games, I never played it. And then last week, I was shocked to see Epic Games feature Bear and Breakfast for free. I picked up the game to try for an evening, and, well, 17 hours later, I've nearly completed it and decided I might as well create a little Bear and Breakfast review. So, is Bear and Breakfast as cute and cozy as it looks, and is it worth its $20 non-sale price? Let's find out. The game begins with you playing as Hank, an adorable rotund bear whose mom sends him and his siblings out into the woods to forage for some plants. Hank takes advantage of his newfound freedom and explores a little too far and stumbles upon a snarky robotic shark who propositions him to repair a nearby cabin and start bringing human tourists back into the area. Through collecting materials, building and decorating rooms, and managing guests and facilities, Hank slowly develops a bustling motel empire. New biomes and motel opportunities unlock as you progress, and there's an underlying narrative as well. Obviously, with the game captivating me for 17 hours before I started to feel overwhelmed, there's a lot to love. So let me share my favorite aspects of Bear and Breakfast. Immediately, I was drawn to the appealing art style, the color palettes, and the atmospheric feelings conjured through the various biomes. From the mysteriously dark swamp and woods, to the arid desert with a Route 66 style motel and diner, to the ski lodges and autumnal hillside cabins. The graphic design is just delightful. The weather sounds and ambient sound effects are spot on throughout the biomes, and the quirky cast of characters you'll do some shady business with along the way interjects a humorous whimsy to the game. I could see this game turning into a full-on Pixar film. It's so cute. And then there's playing architect and building the rooms and kitchens anywhere you want inside each cabin, and then decorating them with the items you buy from the dumpster shops run by Took the Raccoon or the cute little vending machines. These items will increase the room's decorative score, while furniture you craft can enhance the comfort as well as decorative score. And then you'll try to match guests' requested levels of decor and comfort to the rooms you have available. All of this building, crafting, decorating, and matching guests to rooms offers an immense amount of creative freedom, which I found extremely pleasant. And then the cash starts flowing, allowing you to buy more item blueprints from the Shady Shark's pawn truck to build and decorate even more rooms. And so the pattern goes. And it's almost like a life sim with the ability to sleep through nights. And no, we're not gonna question what these little hangy sacks are. Just stop it. Anyhow, it's 100% unbearably cute and offers players plenty of choices in how to craft their little motels. And for me, this combination was the secret to keeping me glued to the game for so many hours. The game also performed well and provided excellent tutorials for new items and skills, but there are a few kind-hearted critiques I'd like to share. If I could change just one aspect of Bear and Breakfast, it would be to limit the number of properties and focus more on building these up instead of adding more cabins to manage. I loved designing the cabin rooms and making them aesthetically pleasing and then seeing the positive guest reviews. And I wanted to keep improving and building upon these properties instead of moving on to new areas. Once the ski lodges were added and I not only had to cook for the previous property as well as the ski cabins and then scavenge for enough fuel to maintain the heat, it sapped a lot of the fun away from me and became a bit stressful. You will eventually unlock perks that will alleviate some stress by making you walk and cook faster, expand your inventory, and your rat and possum friends can be hired to pick up trash and reserve hotel rooms for your guests but it wasn't enough for me. It's quite a linear game, progressing from one area to another and adding new skills and requirements each time. The beginning of the game was rather slow, and the ending was a bit chaotic. 
A fewer number of properties that players could expand further would have been more relaxing and fulfilling, in my opinion. So the late stage grind and management wore on me, which is really my only true dislike of the game. A few minor annoyances were that the game would only recognize my actual Xbox brand controller and keyboard and mouse were actually much easier. My field of view was cropped every time I opened the game on my ultra wide monitor and the characters were a bit long winded for my patience level. They really like thorough conversations. But these are quite nitpicky things that had a minor impact on my enjoyment of the game. Overall, if you gravitate towards chill games that offer an endearing art style, unique gameplay, intriguing characters, and creative choices, then you'll probably find Baron Breakfast a charming breath of fresh air. Even though I wish for fewer motel properties to expand further instead of trying to manage so many locations, it still was adorably addictive to me for 17 hours. But I feel I'm nearing the end and I've reached the threshold where it's turning from cozy to cumbersome unless I abandon some of my properties. However, if you can find Bear and Breakfast on sale, I 100% unequivocally recommend it. Especially if you can snag it for free on Epic through October 10th. And even if you pay the full $20 price, I do feel that you're getting a decent value. It's a quality game with a unique style of gameplay, and my overall rating is a 3.5 out of 4, so I'm no doubt smitten with Bear and Breakfast. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Bear and Breakfast, have you played it, and if you like Bear and Breakfast and other cute, chill, and cozy games, please consider subscribing, and I thank you for watching.